and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hi everybody, this is Avi from AF Math and we're doing our fourth video on project management and our second video on the critical path method CPM. And in this video we will be doing a node diagram in a table. So if you remember, in the first video we had a bunch of activities and then we drew an AON diagram saying that activity A goes to B and C with arrows and so on. And then we performed the CPM calculation and used a logic network to represent these numbers. And what you have here is basically our final answer. So if you don't know how to perform the CPM calculation, draw an AON network or a logic network, go back to the first video as this video will be based on this example. In this video we will go over this example and show how this example is reflected in a node table and present only one new concept. So how does a node diagram in a table looks like? In our upper part we have our activity, duration, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, total floats, and a new concept called free floats. If you remember from the logic network, we had this 3x3 three three box and basically we are going to take the information from that box and place it over here. Let's take for example activity A. And activity A is presented here below. My duration was 4 days. My early start okay, was 0. My early finish was 4. My late start was 0 my late finish was 4, and my total floats were 0 and 0. I try to use nice colors here to actually give you a nice representation of where each number is translated from the box to the table. I think that this is the last video that I will use this pink because I really didn't like it. So let's take our node table. Here is our activity and IPA and duration, this is all given in the question. And here is my information for activity A. Here is my information for activity B. Again, early start 4, early finish 11, late start 4, late finish 11, and total floats 0 and 0. And I'm just going to place here the rest of the answers. By this point it should be pretty easy for you to just copy and paste answers from here to here. So let's focus on the FF. So how do we calculate the FF? Let's first start by defining the FF. So our free floats is the maximum amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the following activities or the entire project. A condition that we have here is that my total floats should always be bigger than my free floats. Now regarding the equation for the FF, our equation says that FF of i, i is just a representation of any letter of the activities, equals the minimum ESI plus 1 minus EFI. So I will go over this equation in a minute with an example, but two more key conditions here. If the equation of FF results in a negative number, we should regard it as zero. And like I said before, the total floats should always be bigger than the free floats. So let's take an example here. We have activity A going to activity B. So let us calculate the FF of A. And by saying that the minimum ES A plus 1, we are basically saying ES of B, okay, A plus 1. And translating it into numbers, the ES of B is just 4 minus the EF of A, which is again 4, gives us 0. But what do they mean with the word minimum here? So let's take another example. Here we have activity C going to E and F. So FF of C equals the minimum ES of C plus 1. But is C plus 1 E or F? And this is where the minimum comes into place. 
The minimum means the smaller of the two is going to be the number that we're going to pick. So obviously it's going to be nine. So my FF of C equals the minimum of ESF minus the EF of C. Translating that into numbers, 9 minus 9, again, equals 0. Now, what does it actually mean when our answer is 0? It means that there is no time that we can delay without delaying the early start of the following activities, which means that this activity is critical. Now, let's go back to our table. And in my table, I already have A and C, which I calculated, which are 0. And now let me calculate my B and my B going to D and E. Again, in this case, both of them are 11, so we don't really need to think which one is the smaller one. But 11 minus 11 equals 0. And I'm just going to write the answers for the following activities. You can try to do these activities by yourself to see that you kind of get it. And that's going to be all for this video. In this video, we basically took our logic network to the next level, which is the node table. And in the next video, I'm going to take the node table and develop a few more key concepts here, other than the free floats. So our goal for this video was just to show you how you actually do the full example from beginning to an end, adding the free floats, and this will be a good transition for the next level. So stay with us to our next video in the series.